Okay, <clears throat> thank you very much. So uh, I'm going to talk uh, mainly on uh, medical applications of uh, of uh, neural networks, and I must admit, I I did not coordinate uh, <coughs> my 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 presentation with the first speaker. So that's quite quite an overlap. But this means I can go very fast and improvise uh, for the rest. So. Blah, blah, blah. You know all this already, right? <coughs> <coughs> and, any questions? <laughs> OK. <coughs> so just one little remark about training. Maybe this can make it simpler for you. It's the same way as when you're throwing a ball, trying to hit hit uh, a bucket, then <coughs> you can adjust two things, the speed and the angle. And when you do that, you probably won't hit the first time, but, <coughs> but then you can adjust the two parameters <coughs> instinctively and, <coughs> and you get it to work. <coughs> so now you know everything about training of <coughs> neural networks, <coughs> training data, blah, blah. <coughs> okay, what's a deep network? It's the same thing, <coughs> but with lots of lots of lo nodes of uh, parameters. <coughs> <coughs> and they are typically organized in layers of different uh, nodes and or neurons. <coughs> and the terminology deep comes, comes from the fact that when, when you make a drawing of these uh, models, then it's nice to present it as layers. And if you have 10, 20 layers, then we call it deep. <coughs> so uh, an example of a, of a deep network is the chat DPT. And I was, I was asking it, how many neurons do we have? It wouldn't tell me. <coughs> but it told me how many parameters. And the parameters, I showed you this. Uh, with a weight picture with a weighted sum, and all these uh, small number sums can be adjusted a, a little bit, and then you can have it to perform uh, whatever you want if you have a good training algorithm. But <coughs> you know, <coughs> this is really an insane amount of uh, parameters, <coughs> and <coughs> <coughs> how could this uh, become possible? Well, in the 1980s or so, neural networks were like, like the little one I showed uh, with, with the 10 nodes or something like that, or 20, or, well, no more than 100, because that, that would be too much. But we have much faster computers. This little thing can, can run uh, deep learning. Well, not too complex, but uh, you can run it on that one. It's, Several, it's thousands of times uh, faster, faster than it was uh, in the 1980s. <coughs> we have GPUs, graphical, graphical process, what was, process, process units, <coughs> which where we can exploit parallelism, and as also mentioned by previous speakers, we have terrible amount of digitized uh, data. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> an important thing as well is that this has motivated research in more sophisticated network structures and not least training algorithms. <coughs> <coughs> so for image, image uh, processing, there's a special kind called the convolutional net neural networks. Convolutional, it's just a weird word. Don't, don't try to understand. <coughs> it comes from some weird mathematical construction. And I would say this word has no good intuition at all. So it's just called uh, convolutional neural networks. <coughs> and it has really changed uh, <coughs> the scene for image analysis. 20 years ago, uh, image processing was a lot of detailed programming, identifying 
with best engineering with best engineering uh, principles, uh, analyzing the pictures, identi identifying uh, interesting features, and then when we have found those features, we could run uh, machine learning. For example, for face recognition, you can find good cookbooks about m which which uh, features to measure in the face, programming, programming, programming for, for hours and days, then you get those and then you can run machine learning. <coughs> and <coughs> yeah. <coughs> so uh, what's special about <coughs> these uh, convolutional networks are <coughs> that uh, we work with filters. So instead of having very large networks, <coughs> then we have a number of small networks, which I'm <coughs> trying to uh, illustrate here. So we have a small network scanning, scanning the, the image. <coughs> and here, <coughs> sorry, I, <coughs> I have uh, indica indicated uh, a little filter that's looking for Diagonals from uh, from uh, southwest to northeast. So, <coughs> can you imagine we have tons of those filters, which means that we get a certain representation of the image that is not just pixels, 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 pixels. We we th throw in the pixels, and <coughs> then we get uh, something like this, <coughs> and we can have tons, not tons, but but uh, hundreds of such uh, filters. And <coughs> we can put such convolutional layers upon each other, <coughs> so the next layer will not analyze the, 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 the original pixels, but <coughs> all these small uh, measurements that we are <coughs> using here. <coughs> and when we get higher up in close to the top of this network, <coughs> then there might be abstract features like, well, <coughs> if we are recognizing different animals, there could be a feature, say, <coughs> nose of a dog or nose of a cat or a beak. <coughs> and then we can use those features for our, our classification. <coughs> and then it's important to notice that these filters are not created by a programmer. They are created by, uh, by the training so that they get optimized for the given task uh, that, that we want to, to work on. <coughs> so <coughs> typical applications of uh, neural networks, one is classification. For example, we can say about this picture, there's a bird in this picture. It's difficult to see, isn't it? Difficult to see where it is. But in some cases, we are interested. There's a bird in this picture. For example, if you're, if you're hunting birds, then uh, that's nice. And <coughs> then another application is segmentation. And segmentation <coughs> is an example of how from one image we get another one. <coughs> and here, here we get, may, might be <coughs> interested in, in where's the bird. And to train such a model, then we would need, need uh, some pictures that have been annotated by, uh, by experts. <coughs> so we have some bird, ex bird? bird? experts that uh, will take pictures like click this and make a painting like this. Then we ru run a lot of those in the, through the training uh, machinery, and then it will be able to, from this, image produce uh, that one. <coughs> and this is quite important for, uh, for medical application. Where is the, is the tumor? Where is uh, other sorts of problematic issues? So <coughs> the, the medical application we have been using here, <coughs> uh, sorry, we, we have been involved in here together with the hospitals, <coughs> one is uh, diagnostics of renal cancer from CT scans. Uh, do, you, do you all know what is a CT scan? 
someone do not know? <coughs> okay, CT, CT scan is simply just a stack of X-ray images. So they take, instead of just taking one X-ray image, then they focus on, uh, on different levels, and then somehow you, you get a three, three, kind of 3D uh, representation which really just a stack of, of 2Ds. <coughs> so <coughs> we have a cooperation with the University Hospital of uh, Roskilde, and they had so a very high, high quality, already marked up data we could use as, uh, as uh, training data. And uh, <coughs> our results was uh, actually quite uh, astonishing that uh, we, we uh, when when the experts, medical doctors, could classify a uh, renal tumor as as uh, good or bad, malign and benign, <coughs> then we 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 could actually do it 100 percent. From a scientific point of view, this is the worst result you can come up with. No one believes you. <coughs> <coughs> and where we are now with this project <coughs> is that we are considering the, the implementation in the medical practice. So now <coughs> we had uh, Mikkel, our PhD student, was the one who did the hard work of getting the model to run. Now we, now we have an other PhD student uh, Try, uh, he, he is uh, currently studying uh, how the doctor's actual work actually works, <coughs> and we are going into a phase of developing so-called explanatory AI system. That is, it, ne it should not be a black box that just say positive or negative, but it should explain that I, I the AI, <coughs> uh, believe this uh, tumor is uh, positive because I can observe this and this and this feature. And whatever this and this and this means should be d defined in the, in the uh, terminology of the medical doctors. That's, that's where we're aiming at now. <coughs> Another project <coughs> where we are not, I've not got, uh, got so far yet, <coughs> But that is uh, a cooperation with uh, Ries Hospital in uh, Copenhagen. And evaluation of rejection following transplants from scan biopsies. <coughs> and you know, when you get a new organ into your body, then, then your immune system will immediately try to kick it out. So you get some medicine to somehow uh, lower your uh, immune system, but you shouldn't do it too much. And only if there seems to be a rejection on the way, that then you need to give a little bit more of, of that stuff. <coughs> and <coughs> unfortunately, I cannot show, show you, you authentic uh, pictures here, because GDPR and stuff, so so uh, if I showed you some of our, the pictures we are working on with the, with the, with the pathologist's uh, annotations, <coughs> then, then I, I could be punished. So <coughs> I only indicate what we are working on. <coughs> but <coughs> a biopsy, <coughs> that is they have some device, they go into the body and snatch a, a little lump of meat then, then they prepare it with various uh, processes, f uh, all sorts of chemicals to produce some uh, contrast, and then it's cut with some kind of laser, laser uh, knife and put in between uh, some glass, in <coughs> into some glass, and then it's scanned, <coughs> and we get some monster pickles of this size <coughs> that we are <coughs> analyzing. So. What we are doing is that we are scanning pictures like this, this, and we identify those spots where there's something to look at. 
And <clears throat> what's important here is the distribution of these, uh, these spots. <clears throat> there are certain patterns on, of uh, how they, uh, you know, you can see here there seems to be a cluster. This is a small cluster. If, but if they grow bigger, there's, there's a problem. <coughs> yep. <coughs> so I will. This is my final slide, but I will show you some details uh, later. If you are interested in neural networks and deep learning, I've written a, a very elementary note, and you can write to me if you want a, a copy. <coughs> but <coughs> I said I wanted to improvise, so. <coughs> yeah, this one here. <coughs> I'll use that to to illustrate uh, illustrate uh, our network for uh, classifying uh, renal tumors, and this just gives the structure here. And what I can can uh, indicate to you here is another technique, interesting techniques, called transfer learning. And, you know, training a whole network from scratch with so many layers and parameters, that takes an awful time. S but what we, we are doing, which is a standard technique, we, we download a well-known trained network from, from, the, uh, from a certain website, then we throw away the top, and we add our own top. And uh, all this up here, the colored layers, are, uh, their purpose, well, what they are doing is to identify various uh, features like color blobs and shapes and stuff like that. So shapes, in an abstract way, is the same, independently of whether you're look looking at birds or at uh, at the strain scannings. So <coughs> let me come to the <coughs> to the uh, biopsies <coughs> and uh, the biopsy projects. And <coughs> why two pages in one? No. Well, never mind. So th this is. Uh, a master thesis uh, from from last year, and uh, I can tell you a little bit about uh, how we uh, what we are looking for in these uh, scannings. So there is an international stand standard on how to uh, for classification of uh, of re rejection here called infiltration. So grade zero, no problem. What's wrong with this? Okay. <coughs> so, grade one, something is happening. It's not really dangerous yet, but it could be the start of grade two, which is uh, problematic. And grade three, that's really, well, serious. Serious, and we can hope the best for the for the patient. So you can see there are different patterns here that we are looking for. So that's basically the most important thing here. Well, I think just I can show you one thing here, if I can find it. Yep. <coughs> This is an example of a network structure. So uh, it's called a unit. So, so this is one of the new smart, in quotes, smart uh, network types. And uh, you know, it's just like the, the, the picture I showed you before. It's just folded like this. So what we are doing here is we make these convolutions more and more and more and more 
abstract features and then we unfold it here. And these arrows across here means that uh, this layer, for example, takes, when we are unfolding here, also has access to some of the lower level analysis here. And that turned out to work quite well. So that was just uh, an example. <coughs> and, <coughs> yep, <coughs> that, that uh, more or less uh, short indication of uh, what we are doing. And then I will show something that illustrates uh, what really impressed me about uh, deep learning. So this is made with uh, an L there's a website called Deep Deep Art IO, and it was one of the first such uh, picture picture recognition uh, sorry body picture generation. generation systems. And this program you can run it on 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 in, any uh, good machine. So what it does is it's called style transfer. So I take this image which is a self-portrait of uh, Albrecht Dürer. Then I took a picture of, uh, of uh, Modigliani. And the point is that make this painting in that style. And I was astonished. If you didn't, didn't know what I've been telling you, then we'll say, aha, that, that, is, uh, that is Modigliani that has made a portrait of Albrecht Dürer. But because it's a smart network structure, it actually can run on a standard computer. But this has nothing to do with uh, medical uh, processing. But it has there is a relationship because we take images and produce other images. For example, segmentations where here's a problem, here's a problem, and this problem in in the uh, in the tissue is is of class uh, rejection of class uh, two or three, something like that. Thank you.